Welcome back to What Artie Nibs from General Disturbance and we've gone straight into a battle here. Uh, there was no um, there was no start for the uh, battle, there was no waiting period for the battle to start. And what we've got here is a KV-2, the Tier 6 Soviet heavy tank with a 152mm howitzer gun. And it's being captained by Captain Ashstorm, or commanded by Captain Ashstorm I should say. And he's on the uh, north spawn of Erlenburg, and it's a standard battle. Now the KV-2, as I said, 152mm howitzer. It's actually designed on a KV-1 chassis to defeat the uh, Finnish fortifications during the Winter War 1939-1940. And we've got some enemies there to the south, an AMX 1375 disappearing into the distance, but... The great thing about the KV-2 is its ability to derp the enemy at close range. At long range it can be great fun but obviously the enemy needs to be unaware that they are being aimed at and they need to be stationary because the shell does have quite a big dispersion. In fact some claim that you need to shout either Russia or Stalin every time you fire the gun to try and encourage the shell to hit the target. Built of stellanium steel, well, not really, but it's nice thought. It's incredibly tough, this tank. If you get the sides of the turret, though, it will take a lot of damage, but uh, the hull, as I say, is a uh, KV-1 chassis, so it's actually quite a little toughy. Fires around at the uh, AMX 1375, gets a hit for 140 from Splash alone. He didn't actually strike it, strike it. If he'd actually striked it, it probably would have wiped him out completely with one shot. But we've got a T-34-85 further up here and Captain Ashland's moving up to investigate. If it is, we can probably wipe him out with one shot. 19.39 seconds on the reload. It's uh, fairly long to reload. You don't really want to go into a face-to-face -face with somebody in this because you are going to take a lot of shots whilst uh, waiting for the shell to reload. Oh, there's the T-34. He's not paying attention. It's got a very slow ta ta turret traverse. But the T-34 wiped out with one shot. 720 hit points. Thank you very much. And he's now out of commission. And we're receiving rounds from the enemy. In fact, we bounced a round from the M44. Um, or was that the uh, the Jagdpanther that bounced a round off us? And we splashed a round from the M44. Okay, so KV-2R. That's the premium version of the KV-2 down there that uh, Wargaming sold recently. And it does have the benefit of training your crews faster. It's basically the same KV-2, but it does have a special uh, skin. Uh, trying to get a Fevra shot on him. Nothing in view yet. Of course, the other problem with the shell from the KV-2 is it's HE, which means it's slow. And, of course, if anything, uh, it, if it hits anything on the way to its target, it might pre-detonate. Unlike an AP shell, which will just carve its way straight through any obstruction, an HE shell can be taken out by uh, a fence post or uh, a wall. Mind you, that can actually be useful. I have taken out a tank that was actually the other side of a wall, fired at the wall, uh, which was a destructible one, and it took out the tank behind him as well. Okay, it's a T-25-2 moving ahead, but that is a friendly, so we don't want to shoot him. I think he was just practicing his aiming there. Nothing in sight. I'm pretty sure there's probably an enemy nearby because an MT-25 was seen in the vicinity. And I think that T-25-2 might be about to find one for us. There's our first customer. It's a VK-30-01P and he's stationary. Dialed in, round out. Ooh, 259. Thank you. Very nice. But uh, it did hit the strong armor on the side of the VK, and that's why he managed to survive that when the T3485 was wiped out completely. T34's got very thin armor. The VK's got better armor. Okay, he's pulling back behind the house. So I think he's going to shoot from a different angle. 
Okay, it's going to shoot around the other side. And the BK's been killed. It was actually uh, killed by the IS-2. And there's a Hellcat. Okay, we're going to push forward now. Now, it was one of these tanks, the KB-2, was actually the subject of the Racini Heroes Medal. And in the Battle of Racini, which is now in modern-day Lithuania, uh, one of these tanks actually held up an entire division of the German army and wiped out numerous Panzer III's, Panzer IV's and Stugs. And the Germans had a huge problem because no matter how many times they fired at it, they couldn't kill it. In fact, actually, the tank ran out of ammunition in the end and the crew were eventually killed off um, and unfortunately rested within the uh, tank. But when they actually inspected the tank afterwards, they found it was full of holes. Shells had gone through, but they hadn't killed the crew, and the crew kept on fighting, even though they were running out of ammo and being injured. They really were truly heroes, because to hold up a division with just one tank at a crossroads was, a, well, it was a feat worthy of a medal. And Jingles is fond of calling this tank the Strunk Tank. Well, it is quite strong, yes. But as you can see there, he did take a round in the side of the turret. And that was from the T-3485. 85 millimeter shell did go straight through. Now he's moving forward. I think they think the enemy RT is somewhere in this area. He was spotted nearby. There's only five tanks left on the enemy team. Two RTs, a light tank and two tank destroyers. Most of the rest of the enemy wiped out. There's three RT on our team. The tank destroyer, which is a uh, Jagdpanzer IV, and three RTs. Okay, spotted him. It's a Jagdpanzer IV. And 423 hit points of damage, but he did take a round from the Jagdpanzer IV, but it bounced off the armor, 135. I think he probably auto-aimed and he was just finished off by the uh, T-25-2. Now, unfortunately, one of the M44s is on the enemy team has actually finished off our Hummel. And there's the M44. We're reloaded. We've auto-aimed. Going for the shot. And he's out the game. 176 hit points. Thank you very much. That's our second kill. Now... One of the enemies did make it into the cap area, but uh, he was uh, evicted very promptly by one of our arties. Now, with T25-2 for company, we should be able to get the rest of the uh, enemies. There's only uh, the Steel Waffentrager and the M44. There he is, this weapon trigger. Oh no, he went behind the building just as he fired. Uh, I just recently saw a documentary about the steel weapon trigger. It was one of the three different uh, varieties of uh, weapon trigger that were created by the German forces. And yep, that long reload, it is a killer. And oh, he hit the. He must have hit the gun or something because he did only 121 hit points of damage to the weapon tracker. He should have wiped it out with that shot. But he's only got 36 hit points left. One more shot should see to him. We're almost reloaded and that's it. 36 hit points. There's only one enemy to kill and that is the arty. And it's an M44. Now, the problem with the M44 is it's a 155mm gun, and I heard a round come in there, and that sounded like it was behind him. And that probably was. So it means the M44 is somewhere over here. Now, he might be moving forward, but I rather think he's probably stationary because he doesn't want to be seen. 155mm gun on the M44. It's also quite fast. 
and quite uh, agile. It can actually be uh, handbrake turned if you can build up enough speed. I've actually done that to kill Cromwells coming up behind me. Gave them a hell of a fright when they saw a M44 Artie spin round and derp them in the front. being very careful because he doesn't want to get hit by that 155mm. It has to be said as well the KB2 is quite a slow tank. It takes time to build up speed, it takes time to traverse the turret and that can be its undoing because of course if a tank can actually... Oh! There's the M44 in ambush and that's the end of the game. Goodbye M44. Thank you for the shell. <laughs> That's victory. So, let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's a first class tanker for Captain Ash Storm in the KB2, which is horizontal artillery. He also picked up a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 17. A Judas medal for taking down two enemies that did damage to him during the battle. And also a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. A fire for effect for dealing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. And lastly, a Pascucci's medal. He took down two RT. He took out both M44s during this battle. And uh, that earns him the Pascucci's medal. Uh, so let's have a look at the team scores. See where he stands. Well, he's got the highest damage on his team, 2,155 hit points. In fact, it's the highest damage on both teams, but he didn't qualify for the high caliber, unfortunately, because it wasn't 20% of the enemy hit points. He did manage to pick up four kills, and the T25-2 managed to get three. So it's a pity that they didn't platoon, because they would have had a brothers in arms for certain. Uh, he also received 1,226 space XP, uh, followed by the IS-2, managed 816, the GW Panther 717, although he was killed, and then the M44 t on our team managed 665. Captain Ashlorn fired only nine rounds during the battle. He got seven direct hits, seven penetrations. One of those rounds hit the building, if you remember. He also got one splash. Did damage of 2,155 hit points, of which 259 were at more than 300 meters. He did receive four hits, two of them were penetrations, two were non-penetrations, and he also received two hits as a result of splash damage and block damage of 270 hit points. He spotted two enemy vehicles, those were the Arties. He damaged seven of the enemy and killed four of them and did damage assistance of 623 hit points. On a premium count, he earned 42,837 credits and after repair, ammunition resupply and consumables, he took away 13,886 credits. He also picked up 1,839 XP, times two for the first victory of the day, and he took away 3,678 experience points altogether. So I'm sure that as he's titled this, Comrade Stalin will be very, very happy with this victory. Uh, proves again that the KV-2 is invincible and he can survive the battle. So uh, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.